My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate St. Margaret Mary Alacoque, who was the religious virgin who received the revelations of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. I think the year was 1675, if I'm not mistaken. And thanks be to her fidelity to the will of God, today we have this great devotion and many promises that are attached to it, many, many graces that our Lord gives us. What she says in the reading today from the Office of Readings, taken from a letter of hers, can help us in our spiritual life to be conformed to the Sacred Heart and thus to be united to God more and more here on earth so that we may be with him forever in eternity at the end of our life. This is what she says. It seems to me that our Lord's earnest desire to have his sacred heart honored in a special way is directed toward renewing the effects of redemption in our souls. For the sacred heart is an inexhaustible fountain and its sole desire is to pour itself out into the hearts of the humble so as to free them and prepare them to lead lives according to his good pleasure. From this divine heart, three streams flow endlessly. The first is the stream of mercy for sinners. It pours into their hearts sentiments of contrition and repentance. The second is the stream of charity, which helps all in need and especially aids those seeking perfection to find the means of surmounting their difficulties. From the third stream flow love and light for the benefit of his friends who have attained perfection. These he wishes to unite himself, unite to himself so that they may share his knowledge and commandments and in their individual ways devote themselves wholly to advancing his glory. So that's the beginning of the reading today. And we're in the Gospels of this week listening to the words of our Lord rebuking the attitude of the Pharisees. And yet, he also offers them and all of us all the graces needed to turn away from the pharisaical attitude. What is the pharisaical attitude? Well, we did hear in the reading from St. Paul an admonition that gives us some sense of what's wrong with the pharisaical attitude. You, O oh man, are without excuse, every one of you who passes judgment. For by the standard by which you judge another, you condemn yourself, since you, the judge, do the very same things. How often do we fall into this trap of seeing the faults of other, accusing them, all the while failing to see that we ourselves do the very same things. That's why we point it out to others, because it irritates us, and we know it very well, because we do it ourselves. And who can be happy with himself uh, who sins? But the problem with the Pharisees is that Saint, now Saint, John Henry Newman describes their attitude as complacent. That that's the problem, the complacency of the sinner who yet pretends to be holy, and I don't mean pretends in the sense of intentionally or consciously, but when we believe ourselves to be holy and yet uh, do everything that we accuse others of doing, then we can never attain holiness until we acknowledge our sins. And so the problem of division now, there's division in the church, 
And there are reasons for the division that have to do with error, doctrinally, but also, more fundamentally, the division that comes from the heart, that division of a failure to be united to the will of God and persisting in a, in a sort of complacency, pharisaical complacency. And so what's needed now, we, we invoke the mother of unity and she wants to bring us closer to the sacred heart of her son. We have to listen to the words of St. Paul and take, take account of the fact of our own hypocrisy when we were so critical of others and yet so far from perfection ourselves, and then take hope, because that can be a very depressing realization. But we should take hope because of the revelation of the Sacred Heart that our Lord wants to pour out upon us his mercy. So this is a message not only from Saint, the revelation to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque, it's the gospel itself. And, and she herself says that his desire for this uh, devotion is especially directed toward renewing the effects of redemption in our souls, which means that we have to, first of all, acknowledge our sins, have that humility to say, Lord, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea culpa. And that's interestingly the same uh, gesture that we make when we say, Lord, have mercy on us, have mercy on us, have mercy on us, most sacred heart of Jesus. So. The, the unity that we desire, that we hope for, will be given us. The path is through the Sacred Heart, and the key to opening the graces is, is our own humble acknowledgement of our sins. And that's what we all have in common. If anything unites us, it's that we're all sinners in need of God's mercy. So let us pray for humility let us take up the gifts that our Lord has given us, both uh, the devotion to his sacred heart and what he wants practiced alongside that is devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. This is the month of the rosary and we've been given the rosary as a tool. We had the grace to do the rosary coast to coast. And if anything uh, could be improved in in our apostolate and our works is that increase in charity that we, we have to seek. And that will help us overcome all our imperfections as St. Margaret Mary Alacoque indicated. That's the effect of devotion to the Sacred Heart and to the Immaculate Heart is uh, that increase in charity that helps us overcome our defects. And then we're doing our part to bring peace and unity back into the church. Praise be Jesus and Mary.